people don't want to make, I mean, there it's a risk to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that you probably, that's why they have committees that help them, people make decisions too, right? It's like, it's, it's more numbers makes it safer to make decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. But really, I think the two we're targeting are, um, small business that have, uh, that are run by entrepreneurs, leaders, people that are, um, you know, that are pushing the edge that are, I would say in some ways more of a risk taker, um, to use and capitalize on competitive technologies faster than other companies do. Like to turn around a big company using later, latest technology is a really hard thing to do to get adoption for technology uh, to, and then you'll see that. I think companies that don't, don't adopt and change, they die. It's either well, they yeah, grow or die. Yeah, right? it's funny. Javier and I were just talking about that at the enterprise level. It's harder to change because when you have tens of thousands of employees, you know, you make a change to the system and you don't know what kind of weird application somebody might be using on the other side of the world that when you just made that little change that you didn't think it was going to affect anybody, you just brought down a whole office or something, you know? And so smaller organization, it's easier to see kind of what the impacts of your changes will be in a larger organization. They almost have to control that change almost to the point of stifling change, if you will, unless they figure out a way to kind of, you know, segment their business so that they aren't, is dependent on each other or, but, or be mapped more if they're more agile from the ground up or yeah. like in, we have a case. Um, there's a client of yours that I'm thinking that comes top of mind. That's a multinational company. Um, and we've, we've tried to paint this vision of where he could be and he's a big organization. And uh, for him to implement these kind of ideas across his organization is a risky thing for him. It's a th kind of thing that could get him fired. Right. Right. And, um, but what the one way, that we've seen adoption happen with him is to split it down into departments, right. Or to groups or to different offices that are in you know, certain geographical locations to adopt and test these things out. And we've seen success in that as well. Right. Um, coming back to another thing you just said, I, th I think it's interesting when you go back to our heritage, if you will, when, uh, when elephant outlook, the pre precursor to protected trust first started, uh, on hosted exchange, which seems like a kind of antiquated thing now, but at the time, 2003, that was cutting edge, cutting edge right? Yeah. Well, the clients that came on board at first were really the risk takers. Oh yeah. Early you adopters, know, early adopters. Right. And so we're, you know, we're, it's not exchange that's cutting edge anymore. It's 365 or teams or, you know, some of these other <clears throat> Features, applications yeah. that... I mean, if I had to boil it down to an application, what was revolutionary? I mean, I call it Outlook because Outlook's an email client. It was really email that was so revolutionary in that day. Email is what changed companies and the way they communicate. Today, I, Outlook is just kind of a generic name we put on it because that's a Microsoft product. 90% of people use Office. Uh, Outlook was the killer application, right? It's like if you boil it down to an application, it was called Outlook. But it was really email that was the killer solution. Outlook may have been the application. Today, that same thing is happening. There's a new uh, tool in town, um, a new way to communicate. That um, and, and it's not just Microsoft that's done this. It's other companies like Slack have created a product that um, allows people to communicate in a different way. And Microsoft has that solution as well that's more integrated with business, which is called Teams. So the Teams, is, to me, is the next revolutionary product, just like Outlook was, to the way people communicate, instant message, um, share files, share information, make phone calls. But I boil it back, and we were just talking about this. I feel like all of this is about a modern office, but it's really about the modern office to me is about the way people communicate. And people want to communicate in a safe place. They want to feel protected. They want to feel like their ideas are being heard. And, you know, like the modern workplace that, those silos or information or the cubicles that people live in, I don't think exists anymore that the hierarchy of, of companies. Now, even the big companies are more flat, even in our, our enterprise company, we we're just talking about the ability to have a tool that allows them to communicate with anyone in that company instantly is a very powerful solution. Yeah. So I was saying that it's, um, you have a, we have a word for it. I can't, I can't, think of at the moment, but it's like this resistance uh, that makes it difficult for things to happen. Like, 
a change. Like, well, and I'm not thinking so much a change. I'm thinking like from a technical point of view, like you want to be able to open your surface, open teams, and instantly communicate with somebody. Mm-hmm. And anything that kind of slows that down. The friction. Friction, that's yeah. the word. You know, anything that slows that down disrupts the experience, decreases productivity. You know, you may, if you're talking to an important client, phone doesn't work, can't reach him or whatever, you don't get the meeting reminder at the right time. Right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's happened to you, Bill. It could have happened to me. Yeah. And um, that kind of thing, you know, all that stuff's important. And it's, that's the, you know, you're, it's, it's community. Like you said, at the heart of it, it's communication. It's how you're managing your time. But I mean, I kind of look back at, I was looking at this last night. I was, this idea sort of, uh, I think it's always existed for us and it's just more manifest more today because I'm recognizing it, but we've always been in the communication business. We've always been about using cutting edge technology to help people share their ideas. And, you know, if I go back 20 years, uh, email was the killer application. And then we, we grew up with, um, the mobile device, the, the blackberries. And then it came like the smartphones, the Apple, what Apple did with the iPhone just revolutionized the way people communicate, the way they could retrieve information, the way they could share uh, ideas, instant message, get their email, check web pages. And that's even taken another step forward because then you had all these social platforms that showed up like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, the way people want to communicate, uh, connect with each other. Um, and I've even seen it in my own kids as they, um, you know, like when I was, I've joked around, it was when I was turning 16, like the first thing I want to do is get a car and get, get out of my house. Right. But my kids are turning 16, driving around. Well, now they are, they didn't really want to, they, they were connected to their friends by picking up their phone and hitting a quick instant message to them. And that's what they're used to. They, they don't feel like they have to go somewhere to see their friends. Their friends are already connected to them anytime, anywhere at any location. And I suspect, and probably with your kids too, is as they gain these friends and are in different locations around the world, they're still just as connected to them as they were when they were um, next to them. You know? Absolutely. 